All right, so today I've got an interesting review here. Um, it's a very interesting movie. I was just scrolling through and I ended up finding this one on my TV when I was like just trying to go rewatch a movie. And I ended up just stumbling upon this one and then I'm like, I have to watch this. Uh, and now I, I just have to review it. It is important and it's crucial. The movie is called Invitation to a Murder. And it is so, like, confusing in its, um, execution. So, I literally had my phone's notepad out and wrote down a whole bunch of notes that I thought were important to keep track of for this film. Um, but let's start off basically with, um, how it goes. Let's start with the story. So, the story is actually really simple. It's just your basic whodunit murder mystery. Um, you, it's literally all those murder mysteries. Like, we got, like, seven of those last year in 2022. Um, there was, uh, See How They Run, Glass Onion, um, Death on the Nile. It's pretty much one of those murder mysteries where a random group of characters come together and one of them dies and then one person is a detective and they figure out the mystery behind the murder. And that's pretty much what it is here as well. It's very inspired by those Agus Agatha Christie novels, so much so that it's referenced very often in the movie. And it's quite interesting where um, there's actually a really obvious, and f because of how obvious the twist is in retrospect, and it's actually pretty easy to tell pretty soon, um, and it just makes it so much funnier, the whole movie, in, and it's quite comical, really, especially based off of these two characters who are clearly in a real, like, romantic relationship, having just met. Like, all of these characters never met before, all of a sudden they are all invited to this rich man's estate, and it's just so convoluted. Maybe I'll talk spoilers later, because I don't, I don't even think anyone will see this movie. Um, but the story is, it's got potential, it's just, the concept is great, I don't think the written out execution of it was very good, hot pocket score. The cinematics, um, this was pretty well, like, set design wise, there's not much to it, not even much score to it, which is quite interesting, so, even then the cinematics are a little boring, so, well, uh, there's not much going on with this film. It's clearly pretty low-budgeted. It was a straight-to-video movie, so I rented it. Um, I, I got it for cheap, though. Um, so that's another Hot Pocket score there. The directing, the directing was actually all right. It was passable. Like... You, you could see what was going on. Um, it was directed pretty nicely. Um, it's it's alright, but nothing brand new. High pocket score. The acting. This is where it gets a little upsetting. The acting is pretty bad. Um, it's quite horrific how poor the acting was, in my opinion. Like, I don't think they were given much to work with. They had very limited um, stuff to do in this film. I don't think they get, they were given a, enough to work with. Like, the script probably just said the lines and then just random, like, they had to improvise their actions. And so, unfortunately, another Hot Pocket score, like, I think that this movie could have been a little more explosive in its parts, but in the end, it just was very, very... Satis like, not even super satisfying. Like, you're hungry for more after watching this film. Like, it almost made me want to turn on, see how they run, um, Knives Out, uh, Glass Onion, any of those, like, murder mystery movies that have, like, satisfying d mystery arcs throughout them. Um, so, yeah, another Hot Pocket score for the acting. Now, my expectations and experience. This is where I'm going to open up my notes pad where I wrote multiple things, like, why is there a line that makes it feel like a porno? 
where these two characters clearly are like main detective character and probably one of our like main suspect characters they're like talking and they just chat and he goes oh uh, looks like we have rooms very close together uh, I'll try, try not to keep me up at night it's, I'm a very light sleeper and then she says the same thing and I'm like wow that's kind of weird um the next thing I have is why does every studio want to make a hit murder mystery somewhat inspired by Agatha Christie all of a sudden was Knives Out really that big I, I understand that Knives Out was huge but why does every studio now need a flagship murder mystery franchise um, clearly they did uh, Lionsgate did not have faith in this film so they didn't even release it in theaters oh here's another one every character is insanely stereotypical to their background uh, there's a Spanish character who's extremely Spanish in, in English like spoon silver spoon super snotty there's an American who's super like yeah I do the brass tacks I killed someone I was in Georgia before I came here it was crazy and then oh my god there's like this get to know you segment where they were having dinner for the first day because they were invited for a weekend and then he goes um i said why does this all of a sudden feel like a college party that everyone does not feel like they belong in and immediately after i wrote like who suggests two truths and one lie at an adult party with random strangers that is like the most college thing imaginable like that's something you'd play with like your closest friends to try to spoof them out now with random ass fuckers in like when you don't even know why everyone's invited for in this whack ass mansion Ooh, um feels like the original plan was to have a bunch of children just stumble upon the house instead of a bunch of adults being invited for suspicious reasons like there are moments in this film where it feels like the goonies and like the kids just stumbled upon this and they're trying to solve it and they're like being prevented to at the dinner table but instead it's actual adults telling other adults that they shouldn't do this and it just feels so weird in the flow of the film and so like it's just so random it's so random um what's next oh my last note is that the twist that the oh yeah spoiler alert now, now, spoiler alert, I almost read out the note without saying spoilers. Um, so, the big twist is that they were actually the kids of the eccentric owner. And it's funny because, as I mentioned earlier, these two characters clearly are, like, having a romantic thing going on. They were holding hands during that part, too. And when they realized that they were all related by blood, they, like, just... The girl just slid her hand away from the guy, and it was the funniest shit ever. I had a good laugh. So, in conclusion, this was a hand grenade experience. I probably would have enjoyed this more if I watched it with other people. I just sat alone in and streamed it. Like, I wish I had known of what was going to happen with this sooner so I could have gotten more people involved. But yeah, so what is this movie? A certified hot pocket hand grenade because holy fuck... I was expecting something, and then the ending just went on for like 15 minutes too long, which is weird because I don't even think the ending was 15 minutes long, but it just went on for way too long, and it just bore me to death at the end and just ruined the whole experience. Like, it was sort of landing in that Hot Pocket area, because this was never, like, I'm never a murder mystery. I'm going to rewatch, like, those others that I've constantly listed, but, like... It could be like one of those, hey, if it's there, I'll see it. But nope, it just fumbled the bag at the end. So, um, yeah, with that, like, subscribe if you enjoyed. Um, comment down below if you heard of this movie and if you plan on seeing it after this raving review. Um, other than that, I'll leave you guys to it.